What up, sluts? It's time to get laid. Alright, so, tier list two. Let's go. Next meme. Everybody kept re requesting it. So we're gonna do it right now. No script, nothing planned out, just data. Raw data. First list. We're gonna go over just a couple things for this tier list. It's gonna be, I just want y'all to know a couple things before going into it, like we did last time. So there's gonna be two parts of this list. First, we're gonna be taking the results from a bunch of local tournaments from January 25th to February 24th. This is just because we have a lot of data, thanks to Freedom Duo, you can check out their blog or whatever it is for all of their local tops. This is, oh, uh, this is gonna be after VBTO4 drops because we get that in English in like a week or two whenever we upload this. First part's locals, but obviously locals can be a bit eh because there can be a small amount of people people take it less seriously so they just play whatever's fun this is going to be different so because of that we also have the results from a 256 person tournament called the labavan cup i don't know where it is or what labavan even is it's just data that i found that has a one 256 person tournament and it is very different well it's actually pretty similar but there's one key difference from all the local reports so while of course locals aren't the best, it actually mirrors the like this large scale event pretty well. So I feel like it was at least worth putting um pulling up. Also another thing of note that this was a month long time frame. So the Bermuda Triangle TD came out in Japan part way through. It wasn't available at the beginning. There are actually some tops with that, so we can make the assumption that there were more. There would be more tops if it came out earlier because it was at a time disadvantage also this is just the td because the actual uh, extra booster with all the melody and grade four stuff isn't actually out yet so this is just trial deck support which is also part of why local results can be kind of skewed because trial decks can win let's get started uh richard you can put up right here this corner first pie chart as you can see for the most part it's pretty diverse uh, we have 241 results at the very top we have shadow paladin at 17.4 percent of all of these tops which uh actual number is 42 percent coming in closely behind is murakumo at 15.8 percent with 38 tops and then in locals we have link joker at 12.4 percent with 30 followed closely by ott 25 tops 10.4 percent then neo nectar uh with 15 at 6.2 and yeah i feel like that's this is a pretty good thing to cover you can see all the list after that so this is gonna be kind of weird to like create like a fur like it's standard so we've been having the trend of not having really firm topping lists but this is gonna be kind of weird because Link Joker is the third highest representation in the local scene, but it's trailing Murakumo kind of far. Murakumo is 38 and Link Joker has 30. So I'm going to put the tier one being Shadow and Murakumo because there's only four uh, top difference between them. And Link Joker, it only has like 75% of Murakumo. So I think it's kind of fair to put them in different tiers. Tier one being Shadow and Mura, and then Link Joker and OTT being tier two. Neo Nectar, I'm gonna say is tier three. <laughs> what? Because it's followed by like 10. If the gap that we're saying between Mura and Link is eight as a tier gap, I think it's also fair to say that 10 tops is kind of different because that's a pretty steep drop off. I in the representation. Why are these good? Shut Up Paladin was already a pretty strong contender right when it came out. It's honestly the best control deck because it can just retire so much. But part of why it's good is it also has a really good Murakuma matchup because a lot of like uh, vanguards in the V series thus far have their effects on ride or on attack and against Murakumo, you're losing your main skill for like a turn. So Shadow Paladin, on top of being able to retire things, so eventually you're going to be able to retire their arresters to get rid of the lock, you can also at least use its skill to retire Murakumo stuff even while PBD is rusted. Because Shadows have a really good resource game, and while Muras does too, it, Shadows kind of beats them pretty clearly, you can kind of just get rid of all of their things while still being able to draw, because you get a lot of draws 
off of your rear guards. Like Mako, you get deck thinning off of um, Nemin. With the introduction of BTO4, which is what this is, you get Black Sword Blackwing Swordbreaker, which is just another draw. So you're able to do a lot of things, even if Zanbaku fully locks your Shadow Paladin Vanguard, as long as you're on PBD at the time. So you can get resources while also getting rid of theirs, which puts you in a pretty good position for that matchup. Also, it's Force versus Excel, Rock, Paper, Scissor format. You already have a huge advantage going into it anyways. Another reason why I think Shadows is doing the best right now is, well, we obviously, when it was revealed, made like the jokes about, oh, Gus Blaster doesn't have Guard Restrict, Shadow Paladin confirmed bad. Gus Blaster actually does help in the Protect matchup. Because an issue I would say that um, PBD as a card has is it's very go big, go home. You have to retire three and it doesn't replenish your own resources. So if you're playing against Protect and if that's the boss, you're going to get run out pretty quickly. And also Protect gifts, you use your card's main skill and it gets shut down by a PG, not in a good position. Gust Blaster, however, fixes, fixes it in a way that a lot of people didn't really think about when they saw oh no guard restrict what it needed for the protect matchup was a better grind game pbd is a good card but it hurts against protect because you run out of your resources really quickly yes you retire three but protect can grind really good the best protect clans are ott and angel feather which have really good resource management so yeah even if they lose three and ott won't be losing three because it promised daughter exists they're gonna get it back pretty quickly and shout out and you're gonna run out of counter blast sooner rather than later. Why Gus Blaster is good for this is you only lose two. So you are already losing less than PBD would PBD makes you lose. But on top of that, you also get to draw a card. So not only are you losing less, but you're actually gaining something out of its skill. Because of that, you can last longer in protect games because you're going to be getting more cards in your hand, so you're going to be having advantage to outgrind them. Yes, it's not a perfect solution. Yes, Guard Restrict would have been better against Protect, but that doesn't mean that Gust Blaster doesn't help, because Gust Blaster is really good in this matchup. Both PBD and Gust Blaster are really good cards, but you use them in different matchups, so that's why people are running both. PBD really helps the Murakumo matchup, while Gust Blaster also really helps the Protect matchups, and against Force, both are fine. I would say Gust Blaster is better just because resources, but Gust Blaster is a really good card and it definitely helps Shadow Paladin on top of the other pretty good cards that they got from DBTO4. After Shadows comes Murakumo. Murakumo was already a pretty strong contender as it was one of the better decks prior to this set. What made this really good though is Shiryuki and Zangeki. Zangeki is a really good card, it's slow is the real issue because if you're riding it first, it really doesn't do anything. But once if once you have this setup, if you can get the Zanbaku first, it becomes really good because it's a 17 base with a crit provided you have both, but also it gives you blanket guard restrict. All of your cards in Excel can only be blocked by zeros and intercepts. But because it's Excel, if you ride Zangeki second, that is going to be five attacks that can only be blocked by zeros, which really, which hurts any deck, no matter how much you draw, because they can be a, like a 10 drop, and you might have to get rid of a heal just to stop it. Zangeki is a really good card. It requires, it re requires setup, but what's really good about Zangeki, though, that people really aren't bringing up is, unlike Raven-Haired Ezel, which you need Blonde Ezel specifically, Zangeki, you just need a Dueling Dragon in the soul. So if you ride Zangeki first, you can ride Zangeki on top of it and still get the Garbage because it just doesn't need a Dueling Dragon, which kind of really helps the card itself. Also, if you're playing against a not control deck and you have Left Arrester, you're going to have a 17k base, which is pretty damn good, especially in Excel decks. Shiryuki is another really good card, but it's not just Shiryuki, it's actually her support cards. Shiryuki is on place, van, rear, or guard circle, soul blast two, your three cards in your opponent's front row lose five. However, if you wrote it on van, those three cards lose 10 instead. It's really good aggro game. So honestly, I think the usual play people are doing is they do Zangeki for the lock, and then Shiryuki for the beatdown, because they didn't twin drive last turn, so their hand's gonna be pretty on getting pretty small, Shiri, right Shiryuki second, you're going to have two Excel circles, so five attacks, all where your opponent is at neg 10. So you can destroy their hand in a way that even Zangeki couldn't, just because 
of the raw power difference, which is insane. But also, her support cards, the grade 2 and the 1, Rainy Madam and Jakotsu Girl, are really, really good. So Jakotsu Girl is 9k. It's not Shadow Stitch, but it's basically Shadow Stitch. If it doesn't hit, you do a thing. What it does is, on not hit, check top 7. Reveal up to 2 Shirayukis. Add the first to hand. If there's a second, send it to drop. However, if there is zero that you reveal, shuffle your deck and soul charge. Why this is really good is it's not that Murakumo had a soul issue, but soul is a resource that a lot of decks in standard aren't really getting. And being able to soul charge is actually pretty good, especially if it means being able to use both Zanbaku and Shirayuki which is a really good, not natural synergy, but they work pretty well together. And being able to Soul Charge off of that really helps both of them out. While on top of this, Jakotsu Girl is on a failed hit. You can deck thin one to two. Deck thinning in standard is always good. Murakumo could already do that just because you can search out an arrestor. But being able to search out threes just to increase your chances of triggers is also good. And what's really helpful about it is because it's a 9k, if you're up against force and they ride two first and they're on a 10, you can just call it to rear, not hit, check seven to get Shirayuki. So you can still get something out of being in this disadvantaged position because force 10k grade twos can get kind of silly going first against like Excel and Protect. It's a really good piece of support. And Rainy Madam, it's good. Jokotsu, I think, is just a lot better just because it gives you soul and firm advantage. Rainy Madam is it when anything doesn't hit. It doesn't have to be her. It doesn't have to be what she boosts. It can be literally... You can boost with her, and if another attack misses, use Rainy Madam. Move it to soul. Add Shirayuki from drop the hand. So it gives you soul, and it lets you reuse Shirayukis. Rainy Madam and Jokotsu work really well because if you can check seven and add one and drop the other... Because you use that attack when it doesn't hit, Jakotsu sends one to drop, and then they, you can use Madam because it's still the same failed hit to add the Shiryuki from drop that you just sent to drop the hand. They work pretty well together. You can pseudo search out a three if you don't have one, and the attack whiffs, which is good. It's just kind of more advantage and more soul, and you, you can use them defensively to neg your opponent's front row just to make all of your attacks easier to block. And also, when you're ready to kill, just ride Shiryuki. You effectively give your entire front row 10k, and in Excel, doing that it can get kind of messy. But also, you can just call it to rear if you want to do like just more Zanbaku shenanigans and just beat face. So Murakumo got really good consistency cards and really good support in the form of the Shirayuki engine. It's just three cards that you can put into all the other decks, which is good. It works pretty well with the um, Mandala stuff. So Shirayuki was a really good addition to Murakumo that gave it more resources and a better kill factor. Because prior to this set, I think Murakumo's key issue is not being able to kill games except by virtue of preventing your opponent from twin driving for a turn and having multiple attacks. So I think Shirayuki really helped Murakumo be able to do that, which is why on top of Zangeki just being kind of a gruesome card when it works is why Murakumo has the second slot. So moving on to what I'm saying tier two with this list is... Link Joker. Link Joker is now deleters. Lock is dead. Why I think Link Joker is good is it has good control. Good control. I would say its control is better than Kagero, not as good as Shadow Paladin. Because it can control pretty well, it's obviously going to do well in standard because that's a thing. Resources is the name of resources and consistency is the name of the game in standard, so being able to do that is good. Delete is is a really good mechanic because it makes your it like kind of like when you ride Shiryuki, it gives your front it effectively gives your front row a really good power up when with force markers you can just kind of beat face you can start doing resource v control kind of early with um the grade two i think it's giali is the grade two where it's if it hits soul blast one either vanish delete something or if you can't vanish delete draw a card if you go first and you ride grade three first you can kind of start you can delete your opponent's grade two just in the early game just to get all this early damage out grade all is another good card because it's a low cost delete that gives you a crit permanently so if you have um Light on the leader given, you have a re-standing card with a, at least one force marker and a crit, which can get kind of brutal. It's not amazing, but like it can help clinch games just to give you that extra push and when you're not playing Protect, because I really don't think you're going to want to use given against Protect. I think that's why Link Joker was doing well. It's kind of like Unga Bunga beat down. You just get rid of your opponent's power and just kind of beat face and do some control things, which is good. Um, then you have, but also because it can do control plays, it's 
it really helped what it was doing in standard. So next in tier two range is OTT. OTT got really good just utility cards from both the trial deck and vbto3 rectangle magus is such a good card because it lets you it works in any deck it doesn't require a magus bensu it really helped the imperial daughter list and even witches because witches have been do doing they've been doing really a lot but they have like had like a, a top one or two tops here or there rectangle is a really good card because it gives you a draw so it's a resource card that isn't tied to your vanguard. It's a plus one rear guard that also lets you sculpt your drive check. And on top of that, Tetramagus lets you reuse a crit. So you draw a card, and if you have a crit, put it back. So it's, while it's not an explicit plus one, it effectively lets you play with 17 to 20 triggers just because you can reuse one in your hand. And unlike, like in G era where most things would just shuffle back into the deck because you're putting it on top you are guaranteed to get that crit those are both really good pieces of support that give the deck a really good like g give the deck good consistency and pressure i think that's why the deck has been doing pretty well just because it got really it got really nice utility cards imperial daughter and victorious deer or magus um uh, pentagonal they're already good cards but the utility and consistency pieces that they got really helped the deck and i think that's why it was able to get where it is but on top of that it also acts as a form of a check to shadows because on top of being protect versus forced you have you have promised daughter which basically means you're not losing rear guards against shadow paladin you just shove the fucking promised daughter behind your van or in the back row or whatever and you literally can't get your rear guards can't be touched which really kind of hurts what shadows are able to do that's kind of why ott is where it is now but while it has a good shadow matchup it has a shit Murakumo matchup, so that's kind of why it's getting checked. That's kind of why I think they're in a really good, similar position. Next is uh, Neo Nectar with 15 tops in these 241. I'm not going to talk about it a whole lot. It has one of, if not the best early game in all of these series. Being able to get a full board by your grade 2 ride, even if one of them is just a 10k column, can make for really good just early game attacks. And if your opponent doesn't get a trigger, they're going to be in a shit position. And on top of that, when you start riding the grade three, your power, it'll go from, you do the smaller things early on just to get a lot of damage fast. And then the big numbers to beat face. So, which is why Neonactor is able to do pretty well. It has a decent shadow matchup, just because if your opponent retires a plant token, who cares? Just call three other ones also cecilia is a good card 10k to your front row on your second grade three ride always good deck thinning always good and it's a deck thin that is a plus one to a plus two if you're on your if you have a grade three in soul so that's why it's also able to do pretty well against that matchup and kind of similar in the vein of uh, pbd cecilia can work as rested so provided you go first and you can get a grade three before you can get a grade three out if you can get cecilia with a grade three and so you can still just give 10k to your front regards while also deck thinning which kind of help it's obviously not a perfect solution i'm not going to say but it really helps that matchup next i'm going to talk about royals monarch alfred's good uh makes all your blaster blades 10k 20k beaters and 10k interceptors or if you have one in hand just God with that. Exculpate, still a good card. Board wiping in standard while also getting a second Vanguard attack. Uh good. K and Bedivere, really good early game too, just because if you get if you have a counter blast and you have K, you get a free call. Because of K and Bedivere, you're starting to be able to pull off Blaster Blades crit a lot more consistently, I would think. Also, Royals have a good Murakuma matchup by virtue of one being forced, two having a good early game, and three, Blaster Blade can retire the front row, so you can just get rid of um arresters just by its own skill if you need to use it i'll talk about golds so golds um raven hair is good is how is how they've been beating protect guard restricting 15 and a crit get that twin drive it's fast it's it got like some draw cards in bbto3 which helped its consistency but also to help it not fucking deck out uh it attacks a lot yeah, I think this is all I'm going to talk about just for the locals, because other than this, everything else has under 10. The list that I've queued up, can't read all of the names, but it has every clan available in the game right now. I'll just read off the numbers, just so you can get an idea of where your favorite clan is. So we had Golds at 11, Naru at 9, Angels at 8, 
Great Nature, Kagero, and Pale Moon all at 7. Bermuda's Just Trial deck was 6. I got 6 tops just as the TD. Nubatama at 5. DI's at 4. D Police at 3. Gears at 3 also. Aquas and Nova's at 2. Mega, Spike, Genesis, and Mega Colony all at 1. Tachi and Grand Blue nowhere to be seen. Also, a thing that I forgot to mention is for decks that have multiple builds, so Murakumo has like Mandala and Dueling Dragons, OTT has Witches, Magus, and Imperial, uh, Golds has Garmore Turbo or whatever. This is counting the entire clan. If you guys want me to start doing specific builds in the future, drop it in the comments, I'll, and if I get enough, I'll start doing that just to make maybe make things a bit clearer. But yeah, so this is um, what the locals for this one month looked like. But now we're going to go on to the Lobavon Cup with 256 people. Queuing up the list we have right here. And what I really appreciate, before I get into anything, what I really appreciate is they actually gave the um, percentage of what people, what, the, what percent a clan had in representation. So... On top of knowing how many people were there, we can know how many people entered with these decks, which we couldn't tell with the locals, but also we have what the placement was. So the winner of this event was Angel Feather, second was OTT, third was Narukami, and fourth was Shadows. So the first thing I want to bring up with this list that we can all see is what the fuck happened to Link Joker? Link Joker in the previous list was rocking 12.4% of 256 now it dropped to 3%. So, uh, yeah, not doing well. It, I, I think it, it, the real thing that I can come up with, it would be consistency. It sucks against protect, but also like, it's not super hard to work around. It's just, yeah, I, I don't really know. It's not doing well now. That's the thing. But also Royal Paladin started doing a lot better. It has 16% of these 256, so it's, yeah, it's operating at, like, I think was, uh, 16% would be, like, 40 people. Yeah, actually, just around 40, 40 people entered with a Royal deck. So, Royals are doing pretty well. Resources are good, especially with K the K-Bedivere stuff. Monarch for Recursion, and now it gets a crit, um, and just beating numbers. Exculpate. Board wiping is good. Especially against like Murakumo, that really being able to pull off Exculpate and Murakumo is really helpful in that matchup. Uh, but other than that, the list kind of looks pretty similar. Uh, Shadows and Murakumo are two of the best decks because Royal Shadow and Murakumo are all entered with pr the, ex the, pr the same percentage, so they're all doing pretty well, which is kind of indicative of what the last list was saying, with the exception of Link Joker. Uh, if we took Link Joker out of the equation, Royals would still be in top five, so. That kind of really makes sense with what the um, list was saying. Um, and then OTT also there. Um, OTT was kind of lagging behind Golds. I think part of why Golds was helpful is because Golds also have a decent Murakuma match. Just because if your Vanguard gets locked, you can just shit out Ravenhaired as well automatically. But also being able to get to grade 3 first is good. Um, OTT lagging a bit because... like. It's kind of just the rock, paper, scissors nature of standard. So it's, um, the, you got a lot of, for, uh, protect beats force, force beats excel, excel beats protect. OTT had some unfortunate things there. Uh, the interesting thing I want to talk about is Angel Feather was kind of lagging behind in the locals list, but it won this event. Um, I think part of why it was able to do this is similar to gold. It has a good Murakuma matchup because it's able just to ride from, uh, damage zone and, being able to heal means the if your if your opponent zongekis you you're able to recover from the guard restrict quite well. But also if you can only guard with zeros, you can just start swapping your hand with zeros in damage zone. So that definitely probably helped it. And on top of that, it's a protect clan, so it already has a good matchup against uh, the force that uh, the force clans which, which were topping that were royals and shadows. So. Uh, uh, it's kind of surprising, I think, just because Angels didn't really do much in Locals and was kind of petering off, especially starting in, like, the BT VBT-03 era. But it was able to get the win, and it it's still a solid deck. Being able to heal off of um, Metatron is definitely really helpful. Uh, being able to... And just doing all of... Being able to do that while also having a good... 
it doesn't have a great protect ma- a great excel matchup but it has an out to the best excel clan which really really helps what where it needed to be so i think that also really helped a lot cement it where it was uh after that neo's at five uh i think that makes sense just because um it's it wasn't doing amazing in locals it was doing like in the upper echelon but i think like this is a pretty fair placement for it it's kind of slowly and falling out of favor um yeah, I think it's mostly just because you need to get Cecilia on the second ride, so even if you have a good early gain, you can get kind of fucked over, especially against Mark Gumo. Um, Kagero. Waterfall's a good card. That's the answer. Uh, if, if Waterfall wasn't a thing, uh, Kagero would be fucking garbage. Waterfall is just gets you cheese out somewhere, just ride this three, get a big boy with a crit, can't PG it, easy money. Um, GN. GN won Worlds, so... I'm not surprised that we saw it there. I think part of its issue, though, is especially after BT04, when Muraku and Cho come back, Shadows can control Great Nature, and control against Excel can hurt, and it can control pretty quickly, so it's able to out some of what Jian is able to do. Murakumo, Vanguard locking, you can't use Leopold's skill twice, and if they're on Leopold, and you lock their Vanguard, they're going to be on a vanilla, which kind of hurts the Murakuma matchup, so that's probably why it was kind of lagging behind. Uh, Link Joker fell off. Uh, consistency issues, probably. Resources issues probably hurt it a lot. Um, like, Shadow Paladin can work really well against Link Joker just because if you, they delete you, if you can just retire all of their stuff and they can't come back from that, you're, not, you're only going to have to guard, like, one... just a couple not amazing attacks, so that definitely hurt that, but also, like, Murakuma's doing pretty good. Royals doing good, too. Early game hurts it. And then, uh, what's nice is everything else was rocking at 11% cumulatively, but, like, the fact that we had almost half the clans in the game named and not shoved into others shows some pretty good diversity. So, I... I think this is definitely a much better list to look at than just the locals. I still think outside of the Link Joker anomaly with locals, locals did a pretty good job representing the meta. So I would say that at least just using this list to define a tier system, I would say the tier one range is... This is the final thing. I know I was giving some tier things before. You can forget all that. Again, no script. But I would say tier one is... Royals, Shadows, and Murakumo, because just from this, they have quite a quite a big lead from the, the next preceding clan. They're both at 16%, which is a 7% difference from the next ones. So Tier 2, I would say Tier 2 is actually kind of like pretty bulky, more so than normal. So I put that with Golds, OTT, and I would put both Neon Nectar and Angel Feather as tied at least in the honorable mention category. So I would say that is the tier two range. Everything else is tier three or below. Like, yeah, Kagura is better than Nova Grapplers and Aqua Force in terms of representation. That wasn't a high bar. If you want to make your own f- full tier list, place everything and put things in like the tier four category to make you feel better about playing a tier three deck. Sure, your prerogative, do what you want to do. I just don't feel the, like it's necessary just to start talking about things that literally didn't show up. Like, I don't feel the need to place Grand Blue and Tachikaze on the tier list when they had zero at locals. So, st- honestly, after tier two, you can just stop doing it. That's my own personal view. If you have any disagreements uh, with the data, not not how I do it, just w- if you think your deck is better than it is and forgetting the data, drop it in the comments. We can tell you why you're wrong. If you have any recommendations for better ways that I could do this, like a different way of data sampling, different things to look at, or more sources, because um, the only source that I was able to really find was Freedom Duo, please let me know that I want this to be as good as possible, primarily because tier lists are the hottest piece of contention in the Vanguard community, and it's really fucking funny just to see all of the shit storms that happen with this. But I really want to do the best job with the tier list that I can. So if you have any recommendations, so other sources, uh, other ways of talking about the data, 
how many decks you would sit, like how to put a deck in a tier. Like if you think there's like a certain percentage that like that, that it needs to be tier one, let me know that. Um, I would really appreciate more sources that just have more like larger events that are just local so I can start using those. Oh, also if you really want me to do like how many times a specific build topped, like if, like you could change cards, sure, but a witch deck and an OTT Witch deck and an OTT Megas deck will still be pretty distinct, even if like a couple cards are different. So if you want me to do that, please let me know. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Hit me up with uh, anything you want to know. And yeah, uh, this has been going on for 35 minutes. Let's get that ad revenue. Next pie chart.